I'm Jeff Cornwall and this is The Entrepreneurial Mind. Today we're continuing with a series of uh, interviews I'm doing with students in our program at Belmont. Our guest today is Grace McCaw. We'll be back to talk with Grace after this. Tocopolis programming is sponsored in part by the Center for Advanced Dentistry, now serving the greater Nashville area. Welcome, Grace. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. So tell us a little bit about the business you're working on right now. Um, well, the business I'm working on right now is Macaw Industries, LLC. And um, essentially how that started is I developed a product and I'm in the patent process. Um, so, so back up and tell us about the original product that you had developed. Uh, the original product I developed was a, um, a weight system for uh, a free weight system for um, exercise that was all encompassed in a um, essentially a big package, and the handles of the weights could separate from the ends of the weights and all go into this package so that it was more compact and easily transportable. Okay. And what happened to that idea? Um, that idea kind of, it just completely pivoted, just a cycle of, I guess, pivoting. And <laughs> um, it eventually, someone mentioned to me that um, I should look into trying to link this with smart technology. And so... So, so was there, did you find some things wrong with the original idea? Or what, I mean, usually you pivot because you learn some things. Right. What, what did you learn? Right. I think I learned that there wasn't enough of a market there okay. um, for that product. And so um, trying to pivot and figure out what could make my product different and what could make my product unique and um, create a demand for it. Okay. All right. So then you switched and you started to get technology into the weights. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. Um, well, we started looking into smart technology as far as weights go. Um, so there was some patent research done there to see what was out there. And so weights that could tie in with a Fitbit or mm -hmm. with an app or something yeah. like that. I looked into some pre-existing smart technology for fitness, and there are things like uh, the Pebble or iFit, right. um, et cetera. And then um, I started looking into how weights could relate to that because there really are only a couple very um, extremely expensive and industry-specific um, products that are out there that would be useful. Right, for a specific kind of training. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so where did that adventure lead you? That adventure led me to um, meeting with industrial designers and presenting my ideas, um, brainstorming with them, saying, will this work? Will this work? Um, and so that was, that was a really probably my favorite part of the process because it's the big idea, which right. is my favorite part. Right. Um, and so getting to just kind of explore all the ideas and um, have essentially a huge green light session with people who can actually make things happen as far as industrial design goes. That was really exciting. Um, and so they helped me to um, figure out what would work and what wouldn't. So from we've a, developed- From a technical standpoint? From a technical standpoint, yes. So we've developed some um, final products and I think that I'll get the patent images actually this week, which is exciting. Um, We've developed some new things into the handle, so the, the technology is um, all encompassed in the handle of the weight now, and the ends are still interchangeable, but the difference is that um, because the handle itself is the smart technology part, right. the ends can, they're really secondary to the technology in the handle, um, and the handle can link to either a smart accessory or it can link to a smartphone or other smart device. Um, and the, I'm trying to develop sort of an app to go with this um, that will let users track their progress, track their workouts, and create plans, um, as well as give some feedback on their form because there will be a, um, essentially an accelerometer in the handle that will um, let people know if they're using the weight correctly or what they need to change. So it sounds like along the way you might have had a few missteps 
maybe mistakes. Yeah, I maybe feel <laughs> maybe even like many failures. Yes, definitely. Um, I how, think. How does that feel? I think honestly, the the first time you figure something out and you say, "Oh, this is never going to work," it's a huge letdown. Right. Um, but something I've learned is to say, "Okay, well, that's not going to work. Can I?" change something to make it work or do I need to scrap this and just start something completely new um, so a lot of critical thinking skills have been evolving in my own personal life just figuring all that out yeah and it's you know one of the one of the things that people sometimes criticize your generation about is that my generation basically bubble wrapped you guys and didn't mm -hmm. teach you about failing and, and right. learning from mistakes and and uh, do you think that's a fair assessment and and are you, do you think you think you guys can learn to get past what we did to mess you up growing up yeah I think there was a lot um, I know probably like the 90s early 2000s um, even still today, people are telling kids you can be whatever you want to be right. and you can do whatever you want to do, which the idea behind that is to be empowering, but a lot of times it can be enabling, right. um, which is not necessarily a good thing. Um, I think something that my parents did um, really well was to let me fail and let me figure out consequences. Um, both of my parents are social workers, so they really knew the benefits of letting kids, you know, fall down and figure out that So, so these hurt. failures weren't a shock to you? Not necessarily, no, because my parents have always been um, of the mindset that it's healthy to fail right. and that you should uplift your kids after they fail, right. but let them fail because that's life. And um, I mean, both my parents will say, you know, we love you. The world doesn't love you. We love you, right. but you, the world is going to you know, completely tear you apart. Right. So. So, um, so they didn't necessarily teach you that you can be anything you want to be. Right. They helped you learn how to become what's best for who you are and mm -hmm. what your, what your skills are. Yeah. They knew I like, they knew that I was a terrible ballerina when I was six. So they knew that they probably shouldn't encourage me as much there as in academics and math right. and music where they saw me flourishing so they would go and um, sort of pursue my my strengths and say well maybe you know you should just be the best you you can be because you can't be anybody else right I remember when one of my kids was younger and and, and was really into golf and he's he was a pretty good golfer um, and seeing some of the other kids there and hearing the parents telling these kids oh you can do this you you could be a professional someday and I'm watching these kids swings I'm going no, I, yeah. I'm not sure these kids are ever going to be able to break 100 on the golf course. And, yeah. and, and just thinking, wow, you're just setting these kids up the wrong way. They're just not going to be ready for, for what's yet to come. And I think that's one of the big challenges we see in your generation is, is a lot of your contemporaries, obviously not you, but I think you see it probably with a lot of your contemporaries. They're just not ready for what's to come in terms of failure. Yeah. And, and it's devastating when it happens. It, it, it hurts everybody. Right but you're ready to brush yourself off and learn from it and, and move on. Right, right. So that's a good lesson. And, and uh, I, I hope as you guys raise your generation of children that you let them fail once in a while. They're better entrepreneurs that way. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm just not going to parent at all. I'm just going to let them, let them do their thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, yeah. Juvenile just, del delinquents make the best entrepreneurs. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Anti-social juvenile delinquents delinquents are just the best. Yes. Rebellion is, um, I think, the best parent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Grace, thanks for coming. You've been delightful. Thank you.